Hi y'all, how's it going? There's another update of the Sling TSI build uh, from the last two weeks. So since I've finished the uh, the rear fuselage and uh, pushed that back um, in, in, in a hole in my shed, and uh, so the table's now free to start working on the center fuselage. Um, so the first couple of steps on the center fuselage are pretty straightforward. The the main spar carry through and building up these ribs uh, and then to s pretty much support the uh, the landing gear box channel there uh, section and uh, the rear uh, the rear spar as well where the the wing rear spars attaches uh, that section as well so that's th that's the first three steps from the center fuselage before you can look at um, joining to the rear section I mean, this it was pretty straightforward. Uh, the instructions in step by step in the manual, um, pretty pretty good. Uh, one thing I was told by another builder was to leave these brackets quite loose so that it can be it's, it'd be easy to mount the autopilot servo um, and or get it in and then tightened up uh, later. So so I've done that. And um, with all the all the channels, uh, you have to place these jigs. Um, uh, there are a few jigs to be placed, and uh, with the jigs in place, it's a bit awkward working uh, and trying to reach in uh, with, with these things. So I'm not looking forward to putting the sides up because then that will really limit your access. Uh, so these uh, rear ribs, which go under the seats, again they're pretty straightforward. Uh, the additional stiffness, uh, or they're on the fore. Uh, that's basically where all the seat belt uh, ha uh, points are uh, two on the outside and two in the middle uh, that one there is the autopilot uh, one of the other servos for the autopilot I think that's the elevator um, control servo so it was time to kind of join up the two sections um, just make sure everything lined up properly um, Obviously, with my setup, it's quite difficult because I, I have to have the rear section lifted up 30 mil, uh, th sorry, uh, 30 centimeters higher from the table to get the correct angle uh, before I joined the it to the center section. And once, the, yeah, once that once the jigs were connected up, um, there were a few things on this. Um, it was tricky to get done was these some of these rivets there are a few countersunk rivets in that corner there uh, they're hard to get to but um, got done uh, wasn't too bad in the end yeah and then pretty much was time to uh, join up the section I mean in hindsight probably would have left it a little bit l later uh, to join them up um, I just went by uh, the instructions in, in, in the manual in terms of the sequence um, uh, and probably I could have uh, skipped a few steps ahead and joined this later but I click got up everything in place uh, the main trouble is once this is click cord and uh, connected to the rear section then it's hard to move uh, this assembly the whole thing is now one single uh, kind of piece um, Yeah, and then the rudder cables all can be brought all the way forward. Um, that's pretty straightforward, threading the rudder cables through the that middle section. Um, with all the clicos in place, uh, the alignment and everything was quite good. Uh, there was no issues. Um, so I went ahead and riveted that. And then it was time to work on the front floor assembly. Uh, this can be done uh, separately on a bench the whole assembly and then brought back and assembled onto the aircraft onto the on that uh, main spar carry through uh, one tricky bit on this is again you have to click all everything as far ahead as possible and see what's the best axis uh, so these rivets on the side if you got those side skins up then it's hard to get um, and get in and riveted um, in terms of axis you could do it from the other side where uh, if you haven't riveted that top skin on you could do it from the sides um, so from the inside of the long runs rather than from the 
uh, from that that side so once that was done uh, there are a lot of uh, rib nuts to be added onto this center console section uh, especially that uh, Z channel to Z shape channels in the middle and on these individual controls uh, there's quite a few rib nuts on each um, all these three stacks in, in that center console again plenty of rib nuts I've been using the, the Loctite uh, and putting them in um, it went together quite well but it's quite time consuming doing all these rib nuts using a hand hand rib nut puller I think the the one that's attached with the used as a drill attachment uh, that would really help in, in this case if I had one of those but um, got done and then I mounted that onto the aircraft so the attachment here is quite tricky in terms of I had to pull the whole thing forward so that I can access and rivet from underneath um, so the stainless steel rivets uh, ha are to be done to the fire or uh, to the main spark carry through from that bottom skin. So I used the uh, fuel tank sealant, dip dipped it, the the old stainless steel rivets in that before I installed them, because uh, obviously these uh, for corrosion risk between stainless steel and aluminium. So that's what's recommended. Um, so that got done uh, the skins mostly uh, riveted on fully apart from where the uh, the channel for the gear boxes because um, oh, the landing gear box channel because there's another piece of skin that goes o overlaps that that line of rivets so that can only be done at a later time once the undercarriage is fitted again I probably won't fit the undercarriage while it's here uh, at my house so then it was the interesting bit to, to put the controls on um, uh, the two control joysticks uh, their assembly is pretty straightforward uh, there are four bolts at the back um, essentially you can loosen them up and then slide it back and forth to adjust the um, the control lever its joystick itself the tightness of it but these um, the two channels obviously the control linkages the top one is for the flap and the bottom one is for the elevator um, they are a bit more tricky to make it quite smooth um, initially just bolted it up as it came it was quite tight um, so you basically have to click it and see if it's tight then take off the, uh, the the locking plate on the top and the bottom surface you could try and take a little bit of material off both surface to open up that so that it doesn't hold that bushing so tight so that's effectively what I ended up doing, especially on the elevator and uh, on the flap uh, tubes, control tubes. Um, I'm focused on the center two bushings first, uh, kind of opened them up and left the outer ones off and made sure the center ones with the center ones in they worked. Yeah, and also before one thing to mention was the I put in these wooden. Uh, bits uh, on the side which will replicate the width of the the wing spar when they go in so I didn't want to rivet the the bottom skin too close so that was measured how I measured the wing uh, wing spar thickness and made up those wooden pieces on all four sides and back on these controls um, it took a lot of time uh, trying to you know uh, get them to be smooth uh, this bracket, the center console bracket on both of them, that took a lot of persuasion to get it in the correct place. Um, uh, it just didn't want to line up the holes. Um, again, supposed to be quite tight, I understand that, but you know, so it's, um, yeah, it was tricky, but in the end got done. Um, and even with, obviously with all these little assemblies, uh, those ribs that you add on, that kind of affects the orientation of this uh, the center channel so try and build the head as much as possible before you you know make those controls quite smooth and um, so I left it until the end to rivet that uh, the controls and once I had it in, in, in a place that I was happy with in the in terms of the the movement of it um, I just slightly opened up the rivets so that once the rivets are pulled it wouldn't then further destroyed that alignment that I had so 
uh, having this uh, 90 degree kind of a collar drill it was something quite cheap I bought on eBay uh, that really helps get in tight spaces so I'm using the normal uh, 3.2 millimeter and 4 millimeter size rivets that's the two I've got on that and uh, with the controls now I'm pretty happy with how, how they are obviously I don't have the the control linkages that comes in the finishing kit uh, to try out the how the elevator and the ailerons uh, the feel is uh, I was really happy with the flap uh, the, uh, the smoothness of that flap rotation one so I connected up the flap actuator uh, motor and um, connected it up to a 12 volt power source to check um, if it's working properly so it, it's it's good it's it's all right um, again one of the things the the, the washers that are provided uh, especially on for that connection it's best to use the thin m5 thin washer rather than thick washer um, because otherwise you can't get the that pin in uh, on that anchor nut uh, the, the co-pilot stick is still a little bit um, tighter I probably need to open up those uh, M4 bolts and adjust it a little bit uh, but with the with the ailer with the elevator uh, controls I'm pretty happy with, with it um, I think it probably will add a little bit of bit, little bit of WD-40 just before um, you know the final finish at that time so pretty much everything is done in that rear section uh, it's now time to put on the sides but probably will wait until I have the uh, finishing kit with all the control linkages because it will be difficult to work from the top so until